What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do progress bars with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at progress bars. But before we get started, if you like this video, wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have over 40 courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, it is Friday here in Vegas again. Very exciting. Still don't have plans this weekend, but I'm sure we'll think of something. And today we're going to look at progress bar. And so I got this, you know, basic code with this uh, thing going back and forth. We're going to look at several different options where you've just got one little bar going across to where we have a whole full bar and everything in between. So Let's head over to our code, and I've got this file called progress.py. It's got our basic Kinter starter code that we always have. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So the progress bar is a TTK widget. We've looked at most of the TTK widgets uh, in the past. And so like all the other ones, we have to import that. So let's go from tkinter, import TTK. Now, I know here we're importing everything, but with Kinter, when we do specific things like this, we have to specifically import them as well. We're also gonna use something called time. So let's just import time. This is just a basic Python thing. This is not necessary for the progress bar, but it's gonna help with the, uh, some of the examples. So to create a progress bar, let's just call this uh, my underscore progress. And this is a TTK dot progress bar widget, right? And we wanna put it in root. Now there are a bunch of different parameters here that we can uh, play with. And the first one is uh, orient. So orient equals, and you can do horizontal or vertical, up and down or you know side to side. So we want horizontal, side to side. So let's go horizontal. And this is all capital, which is kind of weird, but uh, that's how this goes. And I'm just gonna put this on another line so that we can read all this. Next, we need to do the length. So let's set that equal to, I don't know, 100 or so. And then finally, we need to pick the mode. And there's two modes basically, determinant and indeterminate. So let's start out with determinant. Terminate, right? And the other one is indeterminate, which is indeterminate. Make sure you get that spelled right, determinate. Okay, so determinant means a full bar, just a, you know, just a, a complete bar. Indeterminate is just that one dot that's, you just, just showed you going back and forth. So if you want an actual like, uh, sort of, uh, normal progress bar that's just a bar that's determinant. So this is really all we need. Now we can just my underscore progress dot pack this on the screen and let's give this a pad Y of 20 just to push it down a little bit. So let's save this and take a look and see what we have here. So head over to our Git Bash terminal, run python progress dot pi and I misspelled progress bar. It is Friday. I always mess up on Friday. So this should be lowercase b and progress bar. Okay, so go ahead and save this. And let's clear the screen and run this again. And you see we have just this bar and it's length of 100. So that's kind of small. We can make it bigger if we want just by changing the length here. So I'll change this to 300 for instance, save this and run it just to show you what we're looking at here. And boom, three times bigger. And it's now at, you know, 300. So that's your basic progress bar. Pretty simple. There's not a whole lot to it. Now, how do we do something with this? How do we make it move and all that stuff? So uh, let's just start out by creating a button. I'm gonna call it my underscore button. And this is a button and we wanna put it in root and we want the text to equal, I'm gonna say step. We're gonna make a step, you know, step forward in the progress bar, or we could say progress, <laughs> whatever. And let's give this a command of, uh, I'm gonna call this step. We wanna make one step in the progress, right? So copy this. And now let's put this button on the screen. So my button dot pack, and let's give this a pad Y of 20 just to push it down a little bit. So now we can create that step function. So let's go to find step and to increase the value of the progress bar. That's the, the length of the bar that's sort of happened. That is the progress's value. So we can go my underscore progress and then just set the value to say equal 20, right? So if we save this and run it again, we see here's our progress bar. If we click the button, boom, it increases 20. 
and you can see the, the entire length of the progress bar is 100, 100%, right? So this is like 20%. If you did it again, it would be 40%, 60%, 80%, 100%, right? And if we click this again, nothing happens because we've just set this equal to 20, right? So if we wanted to increase it every time we click the button, for instance, we could just, you know, do some Python plus equal there, save this and run it. And if we click the button 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, right? So that's pretty simple. Now this is, remember, determinant. We could change this to indeterminate if we want, just by slapping an in in front of there. So go ahead and save this and run it. You can see it starts out right off the bat with the little cursor thing and then 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, right? So that's the difference between determinate and indeterminate. You get this little dot versus uh, the whole bar, right? So, okay, that's kind of cool, I guess. We could also, let's just head back over to our code and let's comment this out. We could just have this start, right? So we can go my underscore progress dot start. And what increments do we want to give it? Well, let's give it increments of say 10. So if we save this and run it, boom, now it's just, it's, it's moving in 10 in increments and we've just started it, right? So if we wanted to change this back to determinant, right, save this and run it. Zoop, zoop, and it just keeps on going, right? So in order to stop this, we can issue the stop command. So let's create another button real quick just to stop this thing. So I'm just gonna copy our button here and make another one. And let's just call this uh, my button two. And then here, let's say stop. And instead of giving it a command of step, let's turn it to stop. And now we can just create that function. So define stop. And that's just gonna be my underscore progress dot stop, right? So if we save this and run it, we can start it, zoop, 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 and we can stop it, and that works. Okay, so that's cool. What else can we do with this thing? Well, let's play around a little bit here. Uh, we can have it sort of, let's get rid of this here. Let's create a loop and say, for every whatever actions, let's increment it via the loop. And this is where we're gonna use the time thing. So let's create a loop, so let's go for x, in a, say a range of five, and I'll talk about what that means in just a second. So let's go my underscore progress, and then we'll do that same thing we did earlier. So set the value to plus equals 20. And then we can say, we can sort of pause between each one. So we can go time.sleep and then say one. So we're gonna sleep for just a little bit, but we also have to do something else. We haven't really talked about this in Kinter, but there's uh, configuration widgets, or configuration that you can do to all your widgets. And one of those configuration things is called update idle tasks. So we can call our root window, which is what we've called our main window here. So we can go root dot update underscore idle tasks. And what this will do is it will allow things to update instead of just waiting till they're all done and then doing it. So if we didn't have this, this would loop so fast, we wouldn't be able to see the increments because it would just sort of wait until it was all done and then it would just show us a completed taskbar. But this will allow us to see things, uh, the idle tasks that are happening as they're happening. So, okay, so here, this is a value, we're increasing by 20, right? And how big is the progress bar? The progress bar is 100, 100%. So 20 can, be go can go into 100 five times. So that's why I picked the range of five here. Right, so let's go ahead and save this and run this guy one more time. So here, one, two, three, four, hands free, not clicking the mouse button. And uh, here we could stop it. One, two, three. So this is sort of what a progress bar normally looks like. You know, progress is happening. Uh, so that's just one way to sort of mimic doing that. You probably wouldn't do this ever in real life, or, or maybe you would. So we can always get the current value of the progress bar. So if we're running a program, for instance, and we say, 
uh, you know, don't do this next thing until the progress bar reaches 100. How do we know that the progress bar has reached 100? Well, we can always just check the progress value. So let's let's print it out to the screen. Let's just see what it is. So let's create a, a label real quick. Let's call it my label. And that's a label. And we want to put it in root. And we want the text to equal nothing right now. And let's my underscore label dot pack this on the screen. Give it a pad Y of 20 to push it down a little bit. So now we can come up here. Let's just copy this. And here, every time this updates, we can dot config this thing and set the text to equal whatever our value is of our current progress bar. Right. And this should work. But actually, let's put this first. I think this is the first thing that happens. So if we save this, head back over here and run it. 0, 20, 40, 60, 80. Uh, it's not quite correct because of the loop. Actually, a better way to do this would probably be to let's just copy this whole thing. Take it out of here and let's comment out this stuff, this loop stuff. And let's just do this for the button, clicking the button one time, right? So if we save this, this will increase it by 20 and then spit out what it is. So that's probably a better way to show that. All right, let's take a look. So progress, boom, 20, boom, 40, boom, 60, boom, 80 and boom, 100. Right. And that's how that works. So like I said, you can always get the value of your progress bar just by calling this value. So you might do an if statement if progress value equals 100, do something if progress value equals 50, do something. Uh, one other thing I should mention when we're, um, we're increasing this by 20, you can change this to anything you want. So if we want to make it smaller, we could do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, right? Uh, you can do the whole thing if you want, right? You know, just change it to 100. Every click is 100. Click it once, boom, <laughs> all the way up to 100. Uh, whatever you want, uh, that's pretty cool. So that's the progress bar, pretty straightforward. Remember, you can orient it horizontally or vertically. Uh, the mode is determinate or indeterminate. The length is, you know, whatever size you want it. And that's really all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So I pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 40 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.